Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Today is February the 7th, 2018. Roy Jones has given interviews where he has opined <clears throat> that at his best, he was better than Floyd Mayweather. Right now, I actually believe that the distinction between the two is pivotal to how I approach betting in general, right? Let's talk about it. Now, I'll readily concede, I'll readily concede that the best stretch I've seen a fighter have, where he just looked off the page and was beating guys like Virgil Hill, Mike McCallum, James Tony. In other words, he was beating excellent fighters and he was doing it in a way where you thought, my goodness, how could this guy be so much faster than James Tony, right? How could this guy make Virgil Hill look this limited, right? The best stretch I've seen for a fighter was Roy Jones Jr., right, in the early 1990s. <clears throat> the guy was dazzling, no question about it, right? But Roy was doing it because he was a freak athlete. In other words, he was just faster. He could just move better. He could get to spots and get away from spots better than the other guys physically. So there's a round against Vinny Paz at the time, Vinny Pazienza. We're recording a compu box. Pazienza, who was no wallflower. This was a guy who came to fight landed no punches on Roy Jones, right? Roy was phenomenal. Now, all of that said, and while I thought Roy Jones was great, right? All of that said, Roy Jones isn't Floyd, right? Floyd was a great athlete himself. But Floyd relied on more than his athleticism. Floyd had a deeper understanding of the sport than did Roy Jones. And Floyd <clears throat> really relied on not his physical gifts, but on his technique, right? recognizing patterns and having strategies to overcome the adversity he faced. In terms of understanding of the sport of boxing, it's not close. Floyd Mayweather, <clears throat> quite frankly, is what I call, because he's using techniques, because he has a certain awareness, right? He's outside the pocket, he sees things. He's inside the pocket, he sees things, right? Floyd Mayweather is what I call a technician. The best part of Floyd's game, even though Floyd was a great athlete, was actually his mental approach, right? Floyd, quite frankly, in fights, outthought guys during the fights. Take the Zab Judah fight. You know, Zab's actually faster in terms of hand speed than Floyd. Zab also was a southpaw. Zab starts the fight, in my opinion, winning the th first three rounds. He even drops Floyd Mayweather. Ref blows it, but Floyd gets hit. His glove hits the canvas. Right? Floyd's off to a bad start. 
And then you see him making adjustments. This is something prime Roy Jones didn't do. Right? You see Floyd in the middle of the fight changing things, working through things, trying different strategies. So, <clears throat> Floyd gets caught off guard in the first Castillo fight. Right? If you want to understand Mayweather, you need to compare that first Castillo fight where Castillo gets inside on Mayweather and is roughing Mayweather up. Right? Some of the people on HBO during the telecast had Mayweather losing that fight live. In other words, they weren't impacted by the post-fight outrage. If there's a fight that Floyd arguably lost, it's that first Castillo fight. But what you need to do is you need to compare that fight to Mayweather against Ricky Hatton, who gets inside early on Floyd and then discovers that Mayweather, who was perceived as flashy, actually knew what to do with Ricky Hatton on the inside. He handles himself better than Costa Zoo, for example, did against Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton was so shaken up by it, right? Keep in mind, Hatton goes on to get knocked out. Doing what? Rushing inside, getting hit with a check left hook. Hatton was so frustrated that after the fight, he praised Mayweather. He talked about how Mayweather, and this is Ricky Hatton, how Mayweather knew how to fight inside. Right? Now let me say, Roy Jones, later in his career, when his physicality slowed down, you notice that Roy Jones wasn't great inside. You notice that Roy Jones had no answers in fights like his fight against Joe Calzaghe, for example. His fight against Enzo Macarinelli. You're looking at the fight, and we all understood at that point that Roy Jones was older, that he was no longer the freak athlete that he was in the 90s. But whereas older Mayweather still had his technique, so as Father Time slowed down both fighters. You notice that Mayweather, just on technical skills, could have a Marcus Maidana bum rush him. And as you looked at the Maidana-Mayweather exchanges, especially in the first fight, where Maidana bodies him over to the ropes, you started to ask yourself, is this a trap? Mayweather's up on the ropes against Maidana, and he's winning rounds. Mayweather's up on the ropes against Victor Ortiz. Ortiz didn't win a round. Got so frustrated, he started fouling Mayweather. Right? Roy Jones, it's different. Jones relied on athleticism as he aged and lost the athletic edge. You notice he wasn't the boxer. Floyd Mayweather was, right? Mayweather really didn't need to have better hand speed than you or more athleticism to outthink you, to checkmate you, right? Mayweather's a chess player, right? I view technicians as the highest level of the sport where they're there and they're thinking, okay, Right? It's almost like an NFL quarterback. They look at the opponent and they say, what's this opponent's strategy? What defense am I going to see? What game plan am I going to see? What offense am I going to see from this guy? And then as the opponent reveals his hand, a Floyd can then think, okay, he's going to, figuratively speaking, just think of the analogy, he's going to pass the ball, I'm going to have a cover too. He's going to run the ball. I'm going to put eight in the box. 
I'm going to force him <clears throat> to fight left-handed, so to speak. You know how they say Bill Belichick forces the other team to play left-handed? Mayweather routinely forced opponents to work in a way that was against their strength, to literally be self-defeating, right? Mayweather gets drilled early. This is another adjustment fight. Gets drilled, almost hits the canvas against Shane Mosley. Mosley doesn't get off one right hand. He gets off two great right hands early in that fight. Mayweather is shaken. Right? By the fifth round, that fight is over. Mayweather has made adjustments in the fight against the guy with very fast hands and prodigious power. Right? This is another future Hall of Famer opponent that Mayweather's facing. And even against a Hall of Famer like Shane Mosley, Mayweather on the fly in a fight that he doesn't start well in is able to make the adjustments right so let me say this to the gamblers out there you see a guy like a Roy Jones and you say to yourself my goodness this guy's a great athlete my goodness look at the hand speed look at the foot speed Right, just, just look at how he's befuddling guys like Bernard Hopkins. Right, my point to you is simple. Right, Hopkins faced Jones and thought to himself, you know what, this guy's too athletic for me right now. I'm just going to wait a little bit until this athleticism dies down. Now, granted, the two guys waited too long before they had the rematch, but Bernard understood that Roy Jones was a lot of athleticism. That was his edge. Now, had Bernard fought Floyd Mayweather, let's just ignore the weight gaps, right? Had Bernard fought Floyd Mayweather, I believe the thinking would have been different, right? Hopkins would have understood that as gifted physically as Mayweather was, and Mayweather really was a freak athlete himself when he's younger, right? Hopkins would realize that he's being outthought in the ring. That Floyd's not going to slow down. That Floyd was perfecting a defense that he could just switch into when he needed to and cruise for several rounds of a fight. Roy Jones never had defense like Floyd Mayweather. Never. Roy Jones couldn't fight inside like Floyd Mayweather. Never. Understand, <laughs> you know, you look at films of young Mayweather. I'm talking about when Mayweather first gets the crown. And he's an advanced fighter then. And it's obvious that Mayweather is the guy who, right, you know, growing up, let's say he were a basketball player, you know, figured out that he needed to dribble with his left hand. Right? Figured out that in addition to shooting with his right hand, he needed to figure out how to shoot with his left hand. Figured out that he needed a three-point shot, but he also needed back-to-the-basket skills in the low post. You know the guy like this. Think Magic Johnson. Right? That's really the kind of athlete Mayweather is, only with better athleticism. Right? By contrast, you know, uh, Roy Jones, how do I put it? He's the fastball pitcher who hits the big leagues, who no one can touch, right? Dwight Gooden, right? Um, good fastball, good breaking pitch, no one can touch, right? But as you watch Dwight Gooden's career develop, once he lost his youth, he lost a lot of his game, didn't he? Right? That's Roy Jones. Roy Jones fights Antonio Tarver. 
right? The first fight is close. I thought Jones won the fight, but it was a close fight. You get to the second fight, Roy Jones is lingering around the ropes. Why? He wasn't that good up against the ropes. Tarver changes Jones's life. Drops him, I believe it's in the second round. Knocks Roy Jones out. They get to the third fight. And it's a victory lap for Antonio Tarver. Right? Tarver's in there hunting Jones down. Right? So, let me just say, Roy was dazzling to watch. Incredible. But for this gambler, when I'm betting on a guy, I like to know that the guy makes adjustments, that the guy has thought through a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, and that when the guy is confronted with something surprising, right, when a Floyd Mayweather is in against Zab Judah and he's shaken early, right, the guy understands the sport and the angles and the strategy well enough to then during the fight during the fight when the plans aren't working shifting gear right let me just close by saying this Canelo is still going strong right there are many people out there and I'm surprised by this because I think the rematch is a mismatch but there are many people out there who feel that Canelo has a shot against Golovkin. Right? Canelo is strong. Canelo hits hard. I can see that Canelo is one of the hardest punchers. One of the hardest punchers in boxing pound for pound. But let me just say this. The opening of the Canelo Floyd Mayweather fight. Mayweather looked at Canelo and Mayweather figured out that Canelo was too flat-footed. That Canelo was vulnerable to a jab to the body. Mayweather hits him with several in the first round. Right? Floyd, against one of the hardest punchers in boxing, in one of the highest profile fights in recent memory, comes out early in that fight and is standing right in front of Saul Alvarez. <laughs> Think about it. This is long before Alvarez Golovkin, right? Floyd's not running like Eris Landy Lara did against Canelo. He comes in, he's standing right in front of Saul Alvarez. And I can just tell you, he was winning round after round, right? Dan Rayfield gave the first six rounds of that fight. It was only a 12-round fight, folks, <laughs> to Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, you know, I thought Mayweather wins at least the first eight rounds. There's a moment in the fight where Mayweather hurts his hand, and he comments on it to his corner, right? Maybe... Maybe he lost a round there or something like that. But that was the brilliance. In other words, Golovkin just had a draw with Canelo. I thought the scoring was ridiculous. But even in the Golovkin fight, you could say, hey, Canelo won at least four rounds. Right? Against Mayweather, apart from <laughs> the judge that ruled it a draw. <laughs> right? In boxing, there's always that judge, isn't there? You had a hard time even making an argument that Canelo won four rounds. I'm telling you, I know many hardcore Canelo supporters. They're friends of mine. After that fight, when I was talking with them, none of them thought Canelo, <laughs> none of them thought Canelo was even at the ballpark against Floyd Mayweather. Right? Now, Roy Jones, as good as he was, didn't have the skills later in his career to give you that kind of performance. 
right? Let me say this too. Victor Ortiz, bigger man than Floyd Mayweather. Muscles Mayweather over to the ropes. Did you give Ortiz a round in that fight before the knockout? I didn't. Understand Ortiz lives to get you on the ropes and have an opportunity, right? Ortiz is a guy who dropped Marcus Maidana. They had a free-for-all fight, right? Ortiz ends up getting stopped, but he drops Marcus Maidana. He drops Andre Berto. This is a guy whose forte is a big punch. There he was with Floyd Mayweather, not only right in front of him, but up on the ropes. And he was getting methodically dismantled. Right, so let's not confuse a freak athlete who looks dazzling on film with, we'll call it, a freak technician who's out thinking his opponent, who could actually slow down the fight, right? Make the fight look mundane, even though the fight is fought at a championship level. Think about where Floyd was when he hits Ricky Hatton with that check left hook. Wasn't his back up against the ropes? I mean, folks, there's a word for moments like that. Mastery. Right? So, I'll concede. Roy Jones gave me better highlights. When Roy Jones physically overwhelmed the guy, wow, was it exciting to watch. I'll concede, Roy Jones beat some of my favorite fighters of the last 30 years, right? I'm a big James Tony fan. I'm a big Bernard Hopkins fan. Both Tony and Hopkins knew their way around the ring. Both Tony and Hopkins got overwhelmed by young Roy Jones, right? But understand, there's a difference between being physically overwhelmed and being mentally outthought and outplayed, right? Those are the athletes you need to bet on. There's a reason why Floyd Mayweather, even as an older fighter, went unbeaten, right? If someone stopped me in the street and said, who's the better fighter, Floyd or Roy Jones? I'd have to say Floyd. Why? Because of the mental aspect because of the adjustments, <clears throat> because of the in fight, inside boxing skills, because of the fact that wherever the guy was in the ring, up on the ropes, middle of the ring, <laughs> the, guy, the guy looked comfortable. Because even in the guy's worst moments, right, Shane Mosley buckles his legs, right? The crowd's yelling for Shane Mosley. Mayweather just has the presence of mind to think analytically. Right? The guy's an analyst. To think analytically and say, okay, these things need to change. I'm leaving myself at risk here. These are the adjustments I'm going to make. Let me answer the bell for the next round. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I actually think Mayweather, and this will sound bizarre, but I actually think Mayweather's a bit underrated. Right? He is a bit underrated. Understand the performance he just gave <clears throat> against Conor McGregor. If you're a Mayweather fan, you knew he was clowning around in the first three rounds of the fight. You know what I mean? Mayweather comes in, he's getting hit in the head, he's just standing. Come on. I mean, you know that's not Mayweather. I've seen Mayweather fights where guys can't even find his head for several rounds. You know, you're like in the 6th, 7th, 8th round, you're saying, man, has, has this guy landed on Mayweather's head once? Right? That's the mastery, folks. When a guy can lay out a blueprint and not get hit for several rounds without relying on his athleticism, without relying on quick reflexes, if the guy's able to beat you on angles... You're dealing with the superior fighter. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. And this is not to suggest that Roy Jones isn't a first ballot Hall of Famer, isn't one of the dominant fighters of the last 30 years. 
He truly is. It's just that at this level of the game, when you start comparing yourself to Floyd Mayweather, we're going to have to look at it, analyze it, and as great as Roy is, or was, in my opinion, he's not Floyd. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to the comments. Thanks for stopping by.